Hello, I'm Charles, your host for Charles Weekly Party. Now, I know last week was, well, a little bit interesting, but I have a couple of things to talk about today, including interesting stuff about, uh, I guess the best way to call it is, by its name, the Stepping Stone House. Also have some very interesting um, tech updates. They're not major tech updates, but nonetheless, they're things that caught my attention. And a couple of, I guess, personal updates to put in. But before we get started with all of that, let's roll the intro. All right. So, first and foremost, I do want to mention a couple of things, um, uh, I guess, personal notes. I mentioned over the past couple episodes that I would be taking at least one week off in August, if not two. However, um, I, as much as I didn't necessarily want to, I'm not going to really be able to have my normal uh, release schedule because my ne the next couple of weeks for me are going to be absolutely crazy because I am uh, relocating. So, given that fact, I think um, in order to maintain, I guess, a personal level of sanity regarding everything, I'm going to take the next couple of weeks off. So I do pl I do want to try and sneak a bonus episode in somewhere. So next Monday you might get a bonus episode. But aside from that, um, since th this will be the August second release, so the next couple of releases, so the one scheduled for August 9th and the one scheduled for August sixteenth will not be full episode releases. Um, so August, um, if I, I'm doing a little bit of mental math here, August 23rd. So the August 23rd will be the next episode, will be the next full episode release after this. I do plan on, like I said, I do want to try and get a bonus episode in, but the bonus episode will be more of it will be probably about a 10 minute thing um about something so instead of the full episode where i talk about four um where i talk about one architecture piece and uh two or three technology pieces i'll pick one thing to uh talk about relatively quickly or just not talk about what i normally would But you tuned in for a full episode today, and it's about time I give it to you. So today I picked the Stepping Stone House to talk about because when I was looking at it, it, it came across my desk, I looked at it, and immediately just fell in love with the concept. So... Most people, when they build an addition onto their home, just build an addition on their home max with the intent of fitting in with the rest of the home as much as possible. And what I really admire about this is that the Stepping Stone House is an addition designed to look basically nothing like the original structure that it's connected to. It was built to be its own. And that, I appreciate doesn't begin to describe what I feel about it. So, this was designed by Hamish and Lyons, may not be pronouncing that right, and it is located in the UK. So what ended up happening for this house is that there was additional living space needed, uh, because the owners had uh, five kids to deal with. So, naturally, when you run into a crowding issue, you either move or add on or overcrowd. 
So the decision here was to add on. And adding on, or create, taking what used to be three um, underused buildings and replace them with two connected buildings that connected to the house. So first and foremost, this whole place is daylight focused. Um, I know for some people, daylight is the bee's knees. You can't do much of, for some people, daylight is lifeblood. And I, I know there are some people close to me that really do enjoy the daylight and um, find, sort of find it more difficult to function without daylight. So if you're one of the people who really enjoy daylight, this is the house for you. So what's incredible about the way daylight is done, most of us think about just the daylight we get from a window. Well, some, play, some people are fortunate enough to have a skylight. So what this does is takes that skylight mentality and creates a whole across each of the two connected buildings creates a parallel is a whole parallel glass line across the center of the roof which both which is both used for um, passive ventilation and used to provide natural light for the entirety of or all of the rooms inside and especially for the bedroom that's located with um, in the further house where windows are not an option at because the bedroom is at ground level the skylight allows for privacy in the bedroom with natural light and that that's something I'm absolutely thrilled at so glass wasn't only used in the roof it was used also between the existing house and the um, two additional uh, structures added on structurally imagine walking from your er, across a bridge with glass walls glass floor and a glass ceiling that's exactly what this is. The connection to go between the spaces is a enclosed glass walkway. And that that's just fascinating because I can still remember someone saying to me, structural glass isn't possible, you can't do that. If you want structural, you can't do anything with glass. And yet what am I looking at here? I am looking at structural glass, something that we didn't necessarily think was going to be able to happen, but it did. And I have nothing but admiration for that. So you can imagine walking above your flower garden and getting to look at all the flowers without trampling them. I mean, there's n nothing that can be used to describe how it feels to be able to look all around you, or around your walkway there, and you have glass. I mean, personally, I'd, I'd love it. But glass isn't everything that this is about. Glass is just a facilitating element to some of the connections on the site. And a quite beautiful one, I should note. There is a stepping stone ha walkway for which the stepping stone house is named. And stepping stone walkway is if you're looking at it from above, it's where the 
second house, the guest house, connects with the sidewalk. Except in order to do that, it's the stairs go down and there's water there. Well, there are stepping stones so that you can walk across, around the water there in a tranquil sort of fashion and use that to really... Um, you can sit down on one of the stones, you can just walk across them, stand there, do whichever, and it's just... Even not being there. I looked at it and I felt at peace just looking at an image on my computer screen. So, if I was actually sitting there, I'm sure I didn't feel that. And that's one of my favorite things about architecture, which is how to design architecture to, make, to convey feeling. And in this case, I have to sort of pat the, um, the landscape architecture on the back. Because it's not something that a lot of people necessarily think about, but it's important nonetheless. Now, to support this beautiful uh, structure, there is an interesting steel underside. So beneath the floor is where all of the steel is. Above that, the structural system is made with wood primarily, and I believe steel for the uh, Y beams that support the roof around the glass, uh, the glass uh, center skylight. So, the minimal steel support ha allows for the illusion of the buildings floating. So, if you're standing inside and patting the photographer on the back here, standing outside, er, standing inside of the building, it rather, it looks as if the building is floating on the water it's founded above. And given the fact that that area is prone to flooding, that is an immense advantage because you don't have to worry about your basement flooding. Because there's no basement, there's area underneath, and it's designed in such a way that it's you, you can swim underneath. And that just gets into how much integration there is between the buildings and the site. How many people can say that they can swim underneath their house? Not many. And I know um, being in a uh, floodplain isn't necessarily nice or anywhere with a high water table, but being able to use the underside of your house as a swimming pool intentionally is a lot nicer than when you realize that you're in a floodplain or area with a really high water table and you have a basement. As, um, I can tell you from experience when you go down your basement stairs and are greeted with a splash, that's never fun and never um, expensive. Uh, never inexpensive to fix either but this from the connecting stones to the fact you can swim underneath the uh, buildings with because the support system is so uh, minimalistic underneath you have the separate but connected piece that allows for you to enjoy the surrounding area more. Um, most of the... Everywhere where there's glass in there, there's a good view. And everything... This whole place is designed for connection. So you can actually... I mentioned that there's a glass walk bridge. Or a glass uh, bridge you can use to walk from the main structure to the um, stepping stone house. Underneath that, 
there's actually a little pathway and then a set of stairs to be able to access the um, part of the house that's closer to the main structure. So having, so if you decide that you want to take an out move to that space from outdoors or move to that space from the indoors, you can get there. And you can get in, if you decide you want to go on the stepping stone to the lake, you could do that too. And I, I just think that's incredible having so many ways to go from point A to point B and enjoy it too. I mean, how many, how many of us go in a, if you're in a cookie cutter home, how, how many times is it, you go from point A to point B, nothing special. And here it's just point A to point B. Well, it looks different all the time because the area around the house changes all the time. If it's raining, you can take the glass bridge and you can actually stand basically in the rain. You're getting rained on. You can see the raindrops coming at you from the ceiling. You can see the raindrops falling on the side. It's like an umbrella with a panorama. It's like a clear umbrella, except 12 times better. And just having that flexibility, there's everything to love about it. And when I mentioned that you can swim under the buildings, how much fun would it be to swim if you didn't have a uh, easy way to dive in? So there is indeed a diving board built into the stepping stone house, which is really good in the sense that because it was integrated from the beginning, it fits in. It doesn't feel, it doesn't look like, oh, you add that and it looks like that belongs at the uh, town pool. The diving board is it can be used to dive out into it. You can sit down and enjoy the uh, outdoors with your uh, being there with just beautiful view of the water. Whichever. It's there to be used in more ways than one. Whereas your traditional diving board is useful for pretty much diving into a, a pool and that's it. So a couple of other things that were interested in me about the house is that it was actually done um, in a prefabricated way so that there is minimal on-site disruption. So I, and for anyone who's had home renovations happen before, if you do everything on-site, you're, you're bound to have noticed how long it takes everything to happen. And when everything's prefabricated, you can take a process that would take months and make it take maybe a week. Another thing with the roof that caught my attention was the structural fins. So I believe that's another area where they actually did use steel to, because um, in order to make fins that, act, that have a certain degree of support, you do actually need um, metal because wood doesn't, wood isn't as structurally sound in very thin sheets. So taking that into consideration, it's there. It's something you won't really notice off the or straight off hand. But if you look closely, you'll see it. And supporting a beautiful uh, roof with, um, I don't remember what the wood grain there that was used, but you have exposed wood on the bottom exposed stained wood I should say on the bottom and on the roof itself you have pre-oxidized um, copper shingles it's the um, structural elements of the structural wood that you see inside is um, Douglas fir looks fantastic 
And outside of that, I think it's a minimalistic um, palette because all of the all of the furniture keeps that same uh, wood tone as the uh, structural wood. And there's there's nothing to hate. Well, unless you don't like water, in which case this may not be the home for you. But all I can really say about this is just it's something that's that I wouldn't have necessarily thought about, but when I'm looking at it is very, very beautiful to look at. If in terms of guest houses, I think that's the best one I have seen to date. And there's not much of a better way I can think of to waking up than to look out and just see beautiful landscape. To be surrounded by... To be indoors but feel surrounded by nature and feel part of the outdoors when you're indoors. I mean, there's some things that have had beautiful connections, visual connections before, but this just... You feel you feel like you're standing in the middle of a lake, without the. Uh, and if you get seasick, you don't have to worry about that. Just all of the benefits without all of the uh, downsides. As much as I'd like to keep talking about the Stepping Stones house, I I'm going to switch gears and talk about the Stepping Stones to the future that have made tech news over the past week. Starting with the ever-dynamic chip shortage. Well, I wish I could say something better, but Intel's CFO kind of confirmed what I've been thinking. They said it's not letting up now, and they're thinking it could last for years while well, they're constructing facilities and I if you're watching the YouTube video this is my surprised face if you're not watching the video well I'm sure you can figure out what my surprised face is we'll have to see how well this is going to work out but um, Intel is gearing up the ability to produce um, chips within the U.S. And the facilities will take a couple more years to build, but hopefully we'll be able to see that sooner rather than later. Another thing that I need to I really feel the need to mention, for all of you crypto fans, Amazon's planning to accept it. And I guess it's part of the stepping stone to the future of cryptocurrency. So things sort of came to light when Amazon posted a job listing for a um, cryptocurrency specialist. I, mean, I don't think that's the actual job title, but it's in the ballpark. And this announced when someone noticed this questions came up and Amazon confirmed yes they're hiring someone yes they're hiring someone who's specializing in cryptocurrency and they do plan eventually on accepting it when that will happen we don't know but we'll find out someday And the last thing I'd like to note out is regarding power problems. So, the long and short of it is if you're looking at some high-end machines from Dell, uh, specifically their uh, Alienware R, um, R10 and R12, if you live in California, Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Vermont, or Washington State, Sorry, you can't get it. 
The reason for this is those states have adopted power efficiency standards, um, which basically state that after a certain any computers assembled after a certain point need to have certain power efficiency ratings in order to be sold in that state. So the long and short of it is that if you do live in one of these states, you can't get those machines from Dell, but other manufacturers have taken note of these regulations, which have been known in advance by years. And other manufacturers sort of took care of that before it became a problem. So it, if you're looking for this machine, sorry to disappoint. If you're not, though, you should be pretty good. And it'll be interesting to see um, how this ends up coming together because what I can say now is that um, while these power standards apply to um, pre-assembled computers, I, as far as I can tell, I don't think that this is going to affect those with a um, DIY build. So if you built it yourself and you source the parts separately, I think you should be you could technically dodge the uh, power requirement. Because, let's be honest, most of us don't have the capability of easily determining all of the different specifications to see how power efficient it is under how many different con um, conditions. And testing it in mass. I can't, I can't say I have anything more to talk about today. I know it's been... It's been interesting. Um, I do have some things that I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, so when you get the when you get an episode, um, I guess in th or full episode in three weeks, it's going to be interesting because there, there's going to be extra time and effort put into making that happen. And I, I've mentioned it before, and I'll say it again. My, the whole point of the podcast, and in order for it to be fun for me to create and enjoyable for you to listen to, my mind needs to be fully in the game. And with everything going on, I, I knew in advance that the August 16th episode couldn't happen. And in order to make sure that I'm not rushing through the process of figuring everything out, because um, whether or not you realize it, the podcast takes half an hour to an hour, depending on the episode, occasionally more than an hour, but that's pretty rare, to listen to. But it takes longer to actually produce. And with everything going on, I can't make the time commitment I need to to produce a full episode that's beneficial to you, the listener. So hopefully I'll be able to give you a couple of decent bonus episodes in the meantime. But... If I'd like to get at least one through, but since I'm not going to be, I guess, seeing you or hearing you for a full episode for two weeks or yeah, taking two weeks basically of vacation, I'm going to give you my thoughts in advance. So summer's winding down. We're getting It's getting close to... Um, what do you call it? For everyone who's going back to school, either um, either K through 12 or in the um, college or university realm, it's it's getting time. So enjoy the next couple of weeks. 
things will be things will be interesting to say the least for everyone and with everything going on in the world around that I can't deny is happening. We have no clue whether or not we'll be um, shifting into different scenarios. So I know many people thought that the pandemic was over, but hate to say it, it isn't. So take care and stay safe over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully we are not in the global apocalypse by the time I am releasing another episode. So I do hope you've enjoyed this full episode. And if you did enjoy it, if you did enjoy it, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. And if you go to anchor.fm slash Charles Weekly Party, not only can you hear any previous episode, but you can also interact by leaving a voice message or support the podcast. Also, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please be sure to leave a review. And as always, well, as almost always, you can see the action on YouTube. There was that one week. But take care. I hope you enjoy uh, your two weeks of um, not uh, having to listen to me. And I look forward to seeing everyone again on um, August 23rd. Take care and roll the outro.